Um, these retreats are a really good inroads. It kind of gives you a, a little taster. It's a community taster. <laughs> uh, you know, what actually is going on out there? And, and then you come and you experience it and you go, oh, this is a vibe. This is the vibe of the community. This is pretty much, we have a, you know, a light structure, but um, it's very devotional like this. In our community, we don't watch quite as many movies as we've watched in the last couple of days, but we watch them pretty consistently. And people come in all kinds of ways. Uh, Nikita flew in, was that how many years ago? A couple two of years, years ago. Two years ago. A little more. Yeah. Like two years and four months. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to stay. Yeah, I came here and I, was, I knew I wasn't going anywhere, so yeah, and so I just stayed. Yeah, and, and the thing is, when I came here, I had no idea what I was going into. <laughs> not, not in the way like, I, like in the way that I really didn't know what it is. Like I didn't like I didn't even know who David was to be. Like I really did not know. I, I learned everything here. All I knew that. It was very clear for me that I was, like, I felt like my whole world was changing, right? I was, I let go of the whole world, and the next, I can't even call it a step, and it's like the next world appeared, and it was here. I was to come to Utah, and I was even guided not to even ask any questions. It was clear. I was guided to fill out an application. David called me the next day, and two weeks later, I came. And uh, from there on, it was like, you'll find out everything here is just like everything. And it was like, the feeling was I came into a different world and I had to learn of it every day. Every task that was given, every single meeting, every single like um, encounter, it was all for me to learn of a new world, to learn of a new way, to learn of, of a new me. Because I knew like there was something that's... Like, there's a deep desire to know who I am, and I couldn't live without knowing myself anymore. And I knew that I have to know, capital M, myself, capital S. And so that was the experience. And so it's just like, sometimes people ask me, like, what is it like to live in the community? And I say, I don't know. Because the experience is just, it's just the experience living it's just everything is new like to the point where I would wake up like especially then it just became more and more so I would wake up every day and I'd be like I don't know anything like I was like I don't know who anyone is it's like you know if you guys have seen 50 first dates and then spirit <laughs> it was like where am I who am I who what's going on and then I would just like hear like stay with me and then I'll hear st spirit interpreting like everything this is where you live this is what you do this is like you know this is this is so and so this you know just like really thoroughly like really interpreting the world interpreting everything for me and that's just become an experience and, and it's like just I'm living in this new deep deep experience and it's like that's that's all I know and then so yeah that's just been the journey and just like deepening into the unknown and deepening like you know there's no like the beauty of it there's no ever like technically I've known some you know some of the seeming people they're not people <laughs> Uh, for two years, but there's no sense of like, oh, I know you, this is like, that's David, that's Kirsten, you know? It's just like, every day it's like, I don't know, it's like spirit, it's like the desire is to know spirit and to hear spirit, and it's so everything that comes, it's like, that's spirit, and, and the beautiful thing that the ones that are given, I like, I'm so grateful because I, I, I'm like, these are the ones where I can, for somehow through them, the spirit is recognized very easily. It's just, it's just easily. I don't have to sit there like, is it spirit? Who is it? It's like, who else could it be? It's like meeting, you know, the love of your life all the time, right? And so there's no like that casual familiarity. It's like, and every day it's just like, yeah, everything is new and deep and exciting and with sense of sometimes a little bit like, because <gasps> you don't know right and uh, and on the other hand it's just like the sameness of like the depth you know because there's still a lot of movement 
seemingly, but the depth is the same, the same, like that deep vibe, deep forgiveness, deep presence that's just deepens and deepens and deepens and deepens, and it's just like, lately I've been having experiences of just falling, and I'll, sometimes I'll wake up and I'll hear today, I'm just going to fall, and I'll have these like experiences that I'm just falling, and that's, it's great. It's great, and it's just like kind of like the abyss, you know, just falling, and just like, <gasps> you know. And then while I'm even falling, it feels like I'm still being very tightly held, held very tightly. It's not like I fall and crash. It's like no, I'm very tightly held in the love, and it's like that. I said that's all I ever wanted. That's that's the depth for me. Just feeling that like I'm so tightly held in the love, and so so that's my community experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you're going to have an amazing experience with the movie tonight. We are. We, <laughs> I know you're joined with us. Buckle your seatbelts, too, because this is an amazing one. Nikita's always... The amazing thing about Transcendence, this movie, um, it's got some very interesting scenes that uh, kind of parallel a lot of things that we've went through. Um, of like a little community in the desert. Um, uh, amazingly, when we see these movies, we're like blown away by the depth and the presence, and then we go, hmm. Because uh, we were just guided out here to the desert, and um, it's all felt very purposeful and helpful, and but you know, being guided out to the desert when we were watching Transcendence, I guess you had the same experience with me. Like, oh yeah. my gosh, this is like what we're going through. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I was like, I, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, really? Because it was like that movie when we watched it for the first time. It was so spirit given. It was just like you're watching it. And it's like we were set up for this deep, deep experience. And it was Easter Eve, just like a Saturday night before Easter. And I knew whatever movie we were going to watch, it was going to set us up for the Easter talk, right? The next day. And it was just mind-blowing, talking about resurrection of the mind, really. And I, I was like watching it, I was like, you're kidding me. You're just like, you're kidding me. It's just so obvious. It's like Spirit was talking, and uh, it was. I was like, this is exactly what we do. This is exactly what we do. From there on, like, because we were on tour, and some people were asking, so what happens in the community? What do you guys do? How is it? And I would tell them, watch Transcendence. That's exactly what happens, right? And it's just like this deep, like, deep devotion. It's like all the, like, it's just like everyone who comes here, like they're all everyone is called out of the world it's like there's a call to leave the world and just really immerse in the purpose immerse immerse in, in the new like in this depth in the state of mind and in the movie they call it being uploaded into the system but which is like a, a state of mind which is christ mind and it this like really state of mind that is absolutely defenseless and the only purpose is just like being in purpose just being in Christ, and uh, yeah, and all the events are taught and take place are taking place in the desert, and just like, and we're here in the like in the desert in the middle of nowhere, and uh, and everything that is given, like all the funds, it's all used for the awakening, just like within this context, within this community, and uh, so yeah, that was very very interesting to see and how. And then there's a lot of emphasis on trust, like, at a, like just trust, like, and the Course is saying, like, trust will settle every problem now, and I would even say, trust will settle every doubt now, and so the only thing that is ever on the way is just like, uh, a lack of trust and how right during the movie I saw how the trust has to be complete even if it's 99.9 percent .9%, it has to be a hundred percent trust and this is where 
otherwise that one percent will make a lot of turbulence so it's like like it, it, it just became so simple and obvious every time there's like turbulence in the like in the in the mind it's because there's a, a call into trust it's just really like choose to trust now and so yeah yeah and and you know seeing this movie it was I know it, it, the whole world kind of seems real surreal to me, but this was really surreal because we were up there to do this Easter program the next day. We were in this hotel, or this motel, and we all said, okay, let's go. We're going to see Transcendence, and we were in the hotel room, and the power went out. And so we couldn't take the elevator. We were going to the movie, we couldn't take the elevator, we had to literally take the stairs go down to get into a car, we drove to the movie theater. It's the first time I've ever driven to a movie theater, which was quite nearby. And instead of people going in the entrance, everyone was coming out. The entire theater was emptying out, because they had no power. So we're like, hmm, mm. this is going to be fun. It's just this glee, like, oh, wow, we're <laughs> on an adventure to see Transcendence, and the people are coming out of the movie theater. Everyone's coming out of the movie theater, heading for their cars, and we're just sitting there kind of praying, watching all these people come out. And then, Kirsten got on her iPhone, and she looked, and she looked, found a theater that was some miles away, and so you can just click on the, the button and, to call the number. Just, you could see it. It came very quick. She hit it to call, and then a guy answered at the theater, and Kirsten didn't say anything except, do you have power? Imagine answering a phone, and that's all you hear on the phone is, do you have power? And he goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so they had this kind of funny exchange to start off with, do you have power? Not hello, or just, do you have power? So we hit the other button, and it gives you the route, we went right there, we go to this big theater, we could tell we were getting upgraded from a standard <laughs> theater to an IMAX theater. Like, oh no, you're not going to see Transcendence on a regular screen. The Spirit was like, oh no, 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 you're going to <laughs> see Transcendence on the big screen. But we first we walked in, there were all these ticket takers, you know, this big place, multiplex and IMAX, and we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We go in there, out of all these rows, we get in a row, we go up to the front, and we get up to the front, and the guy who's going to sell us our ticket was the very guy of all of them that got the, do you have power call. And we heard ki the Kiwi accent of Kirsten, he goes, it's you, the do you have power girl. And so we were laughing, then we went in there. So we get in there, and we get to the beginning of the movie, we're all like watching all the previews, and it's, it's not only IMAX, it's surround sound. So, you know, when the previews are going on, our throats, our collarbones are shaking and we're all, you know, it's like, oh, it's big and it's blasting us with Dolby sound and, I mean, surround sound. It was like, whoa, we just got upgraded to the penthouse, you know, it was like, whoa. And then we got the movie started. We were in Massachusetts. And we were looking around at different places. We were a little north of Boston. The line comes on in the movie, Boston has power. And we were all like, Boston, we were all like, Boston has power. It was because we were just north of Boston in Massachusetts. And it was like right in the movie. And we were just like, okay, this is really feeling surreal. But it's almost like we were taken to the movies. We were in the hands, like little putty in the hands of the spirit for a really spectacular, magnificent experience. And the thing about it is, I think if you had to have one thought, the trust and the faith, because it's a relationship between a husband and wife, who are very much in love, and who, um, the wife really wants to, you know, make the world a better place. She wants to see the healing of Mother Earth. Um, and her husband is like this brilliant, scientific mind, and they have this great love, um, this loving relationship, and, and then as the movie goes on with, the, with Johnny Depp and the Transcendence, you can start to see everything that even seems to happen 
is really a reflection of mind, of, of transcendent mind and also of a mind that's opening, that still has fears and doubts, still wants to make the world a better place, you know, still is opening, evolving, growing, and yet everything is a reflection of that mind. It's almost like the Spirit lovingly answers everything. Just, it's just so beautifully given. And then, as you move on through this movie, you'll notice that um, there's this thing that some of you are familiar with called AI. Who knows what AI is? Artificial, Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Yeah. Now, there's been science fiction movies going back decades, and that's, people always got a little spooked with some of these <coughs> science fiction movies. But does any of you, do you ever remember uh, 2001 yeah. Space, Space Odyssey, Odyssey. <laughs> where you're watching the movie? And there's just kind of this feeling that comes over you toward the end, when Hal yeah. <laughs> is in control. Yeah. And everybody in the theater was like, whoa! You could just feel it ripple, because the humans weren't in charge anymore. Hal was. Yeah. And then there was this, ooh, this AI fear. But it's really the fear of something greater. It's not really artificial intelligence. We could say there's a fear of divine intelligence mm -hmm. that, that is beyond human comprehension. And because humans like to put everything into a box, and box it up, and understand it in tiny little segments, and this is transcendent, that this is an example, the fear of AI is the fear of God's love. It's the ego's fear of God's love really being portrayed as AI. So then, you know, there were other movies that came along, um, you know, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, um, they had little lumps of going through the ground, you know, and these kind of semi-invisible things. But Then there was a movie that came out called Invasion, where it was an invisible invader um, that, that came. And the people, when they were taken over, they, they became very serene when this invasion, if you ever watched the movie Invasion, the, this invisible force kind of takes over Earth. And the people all go, become very, very serene. And, uh, like Serena, very serene, and there's war stop and crime stops, and I'm like watching the movie going, this is spectacular, this is no invasion, <laughs> this is a transformation. Um, and I've tended, there's another movie that came out recently called Host, where this invisible thing seems to take over people, and then they have these glowy eyes. They're not only pretty serene, but they're glowy, sparkly eyes. I'm like, oh, I'm liking these sci-fi movies. These are supposed to be scary movies, and, and it takes over for the humans, all the human drama. They have glowy eyes instead. Well, this is good with this movie, too, because um, there, there's like tr transcendence, and then there's almost like a transmission of this transcendence, reflections of it on Earth. And the, it's only the ego that fears like it's losing something, something higher is taking over, something higher is taking control. So just watch your emotions as you go through this movie. Uh, watch your own fear of, of something transcendent, your own fear of a higher love, your own fear of, they, you know, people call it artificial intelligence, and there's a whole group here that are trying to stop artificial intelligence because of the fear of where it's all heading. But that was really profound for me um, in this movie. I think it has a lot of different aspects to it. At some point, I guess we got a few, like a few movies like that in the row, right? Where it, uh, with the theme that something higher is taking over, and uh, and you can even like in theater or everywhere, like you could feel everyone was like afraid, and meanwhile we were we would be sitting there like yeah yeah rooting for that, you know, <laughs> for the other for the invisible power. like yeah take it over go power. yeah go. go power. <laughs> and it was just like really <laughs> fun. <laughs> we're, not, we're not living for the humans. <laughs> go power, go power, take it all. Go over, take the whole thing over. Because really, that's the, the Spirit wants us to transform our awareness so everything is love and light, that, that everything is unified, everything is transcendent. Omniscience is, is not like this thing that's relegated to God. It's, it's our omniscience being fully aware of everything and everyone. Or like uh, the movie we just saw, um, Lucy, I Am Everywhere. Mm -hmm. This movie came out actually before Lucy did in the year. So we were like, wow, 
we yeah. were like, the, we were like, it was at that trans at that day, th that evening when we saw Transcendence. That was the first time we also w saw the trailer for Lucy. And we were like, that's the next one. That's uh. our next hit. <laughs> so, yeah, and they're both like same theme. I'm everywhere. Yeah. yeah, who are you? It's like I'm everything. I'm everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's good too because this is like there's certain humans here that are kind of allegiances and alliances. It's interesting Morgan Freeman's in this one and in Lucy, yeah. and the trailer came out for Lucy when this one came out, and they both have the theme "I am everywhere." And so there's all these things, but it's interesting with the humans how this this idea of alliances and friendships and loyalties, you know. The transcendent experience doesn't really have friendships and loyalties and allegiances. It's all specialness. You know, you're used to watching the movies and okay, who's on whose side here? Oh, I didn't. Oh my God, they're they're not in. They're in on it all along. And you know how the mind tries to find out what's going on, and tries to discern. And that's what's so cool about these kind of spirit takeover movies, <laughs> is that. The, the friendships and the alliances, and even the idea of a husband and wife. Uh, there's a love there, and there's a trust there, and yet the doubt thoughts can appear in different forms. Yeah. Friends can reflect doubt. How many times have we had that where we're on our spiritual journey, and we're opening all of these fascinating ways, and then a friend or a loved one say, be careful, <laughs> be cautious. <laughs> but th that's kind of interesting. when the. Spirit is taking over, the doubt thoughts get acted out, like, you better really be careful. Do you know what you're getting into? And there's the fear of a higher self. You know, like personality selves have become so accustomed that that's the norm. Oh yeah, yeah, I can deal with human. I'm okay, I can handle human. But nothing beyond the human. You know, like that's ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. And some people just dismiss God or dismiss oneness, you know, or say, or ghosts or angels or whatever, but oh, that's just silliness. But there's a fear of this, this vastness. Yeah, yeah, there's like, there's a great scene. It's like, you know, originally they, they, they you know, the husband and the wife, um, they had great love, right? And so as um, the husband has been transcendent at some point, and so he came back as this new being and there's still love and then at some point it's just like there's this great scene how um, he tells her I can feel your heart I can feel your fear you something about like I can like you, you have doubt that he just pretty much tells her what's in her mind and she really freaks out and she's like you can't do that right and it's again it's just like private. it's private you can't do that and it's again it's just like with this opening up there's it's just like you're open like uh opening up to a deeper connection and it's just like this fear of true intimacy even you know like again like intimacy is not romantic it's not like physical it's not sexual and it's like it's not fear of sex it's just like this really letting it in that's something it's just losing itself, that nothing, it's just like you can feel the self dissolving and then there's that like, even with all that great love, you can't do that, right? And it's, um, yeah, also like probably, I know, very common on the spiritual journey. It's like, yeah, and it's like, and, and this fear, it's like, who are you? Are you still Will, I think his name, or not? And there's just like, where, what are you? You know, like, have you, like, has anyone, had that they've meet they've met someone and you can feel the presence of the presence you can feel the presence and then there's like hmm, where what how to relate you know trying to like so a part like you, like you know there's a part that's trying to grab on to, grab on to something just kind of like put some kind of a box because there's like it's so threatening being in that pure vastness and that in like in the presence of well everything and everywhere so and it's just like, again, yeah, like David said, in, you know, invite, uh, just like, invitation to watch the feeling, to watch the emotions and thoughts during the during this movie, just kind of like with Solaris. It's like a great experience, just like kind of self-honesty, just really, 
<laughs> even I, during like the first month, at some point I was like, mm, a little bit like, oh. I had a bit of shivers, like, oh, yeah, because <laughs> you can just feel it, it's just like, almost like, the experience, like, almost like being naked and for like, naked without a skin, not even naked in the body, but now it's just like, oh, oh. but you know, just staying there feels good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we, we talked about, we shed a little bit of that invention of lying, and we talked about no private thoughts, no people pleasing, but, but to the ego, there's nothing more terrifying than no private thoughts. If you just kind of go, ah, oh, that sounds kind of, yeah, sentimentally I like that, no private thoughts, no private minds. Why do you think people talk about private parts, you know? Why, what would make parts private? Why are some parts private and other parts not private? Because it's a reflection of, of private thoughts and private minds. And um, why are people a little suspicious when somebody, they go to a psychic and their psychic kind of reads their mind, just reads your whole life, just lays it right out, it's like, ooh, oh. Uh, when I was in Cincinnati many years ago, there was a, a little uh, shop called Whatever Works Wellness Center. So I, I saw this cute little shop, I mean, it had all kinds of stuff in the window, store window, went, whatever works wellness center, I'm going in there. So I struck up a conversation with the owners, and um, they were like, yeah, yeah, and the more they talked to me, they said, what are you into? I said, oh, A Course in Miracles, they said, oh, would you come and facilitate A Course in Miracles? You could start A Course in Miracles group right here, what a perfect group to have in whatever works wellness center, A Course in Miracles group. I said, okay. So I think I was on Monday nights. I would come Monday nights, Monday nights, Monday nights, and then I'd stop in during the week. One week I stopped in, as I'm, it was some other day, and I, and I walked in. I was just walking through the shop, and I met the, the woman, who was a partner, uh, a, a woman and a man that were partners, and I, I first talked to her, and then her partner came over, Vincent came over, and they said, we're scared, David, we're really, scared. And I said, what, what's happening? And they said, well, this, this teenager came into our shop and he was totally telepathic and he totally read our minds. He just walked up to one and just, he just zoomed right in. He was like right inside my mind. Almost like X-Men, you know, Charles Xavier. He was like right inside my mind. And that was the woman. And then and then the teenager went over, and Vince was having a bad day, so he was kind of by himself, and just kind of sulking a little bit. And the kid goes over there, and he just totally reads his mind, and it frightened them both. Um, the owners of the shop, <coughs> even though whatever works, was frightened by the telepathic teenager. So I said, well, what would you do? And they said, we told him, come back for David's Course in Miracles group. <laughs> just go get out of here. <laughs> and we kind of chased him out of the store, and they said, come back. So he actually came um, to my Course in Miracles group, and he came in and he said, Oh yeah, my mom studied A Course in Miracles, and he sat down, I welcomed him in, and it was a small group, maybe like six or seven people, and he sat down, and then he looked at everybody in the eye, and he just went, boom, read their mind, boom, read their mind, boom, read their mind, boom. He went around the whole room, and you should have seen this course group, they were just like, and I said, wait, well, what's the fear? What's going on with all the fear here? And I said, this is where it's all heading, you know, why, why we're forgiving, why we're doing all this inner work. For this, I said, this is, this is a gift from the Holy Spirit, a little snapshot of where it's all heading, because he was just boom, 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 boom. And the, everybody in the course group was locked up. They just were like, oh, you could just see these stiffs, almost like they'd seen a ghost or something, a, a young ghost, a teenage ghost had walked in. So anyway, I kind of smiled at him and I said, this is beautiful and thank you and thanked him and everything. And then he got up and he, he left the room real quickly and he went out to his car and he brought back a photo album of him sitting in a field with hundreds of butterflies all over him. And he opened it up and I was like, because then the people all went, oh my God, look at, you know, like looking, looking at photos of, of the same guy with butterflies all over him from head to toe. And they just, all the hearts opened up immediately. He, it was the spirit knew that they had to relate in some kind of symbol. 
But it was, I noticed how frightened they all were when he was reading their minds. And how the butterfly pictures, they had just opened up and relaxed. And he was one of the gangs, as soon as he passed the photo of them around. But that just reminded me about, there's a fear of transcendence. There's a fear of, of you know, that's what happened with Jesus, with the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. When he would, remember when the woman, the, the prostitute walked in and said, knelt down before him and took out her oils and she took out her hair and she, and all of their thoughts, how dare him, if he knew who she was. This, he can't be the Christ because look at, look at who he's working with, you know. Christ would never, in their minds, would never stoop to, to be with a woman who was a prostitute. So they were judging, judging, judging her and then he reads all their thoughts. That's in the Bible, he'll just read their thoughts and they're astonished, they're frightened a bit too. But that's where this is heading. And what's good about this is clearly Johnny Depp, you know, goes into this transcendent state. And then you get to watch the human reactions. Even from friends, colleagues, buddies, you know. Imagine if, you know, suddenly your, your mother <laughs> was transcendent, you know, and you're like, no, Mom, come on. <laughs> Cut it out. You're scaring me. It's a little too freaky. You know, it, it, this is the thing that Johnny Depp goes through in the sense that people are afraid of transcendence. They're afraid of love. And most people are not consciously afraid of love. If you, if you interview people on the street, they would say, I'm not afraid of love. I want love. I want love. I've been searching for love my whole life. They don't really understand how much fear is there when there's actual love. In fact, one time I, I had a friend who went to India and um, she was kind of in search of uh, Sai Baba at the time. And so she goes and she's going around, she's meeting all these Babas, Baba, 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 everywhere you know. And they go, oh my God, how am I going to find Sai Baba? Everybody's called Baba. You know? And they say, oh, there's a guru there, and go, and go up this road, do this, and this. So her and her partner were searching all India to try to find Sai Baba. So finally she gets, meets this guy, and, and the guy says, I'll take you to Sai Baba. So they have to go up, 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 up to this remote place, and finally um, she's taken to a door, and they open the door, and she walks into the room, and she turns, and there's this man there, and just waves of love like she never felt in her whole life just start washing over her, and washing over her, and she's like, oh, I found him, I found him, she's in the same room, it's just this man and her. And she's like, oh, and the waves are hitting her, just like, and then the figure goes and points to the next room. Mm -hmm. It's not Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. It's just somebody who lives with Sai Baba. <laughs> <laughs> and so she follows and she walks, she opens the door, and she goes into the next room where Sai Baba is. Fear like she never <laughs> experienced it just gripped her as she walked into the next room. The, spot, the waves of love was with the devotee. <laughs> then she got to go into the next room and <gasps> almost lost her breath. It was such so fearful. Fear of love. That's what the Course is telling us. You're afraid of love. You don't really want it. If you wanted it, you'd have it. <laughs> you'd know it, because it's you. <laughs> but you're afraid of it. You believe you're something else other than it. And now it has turned frightening. So this is a good movie. I think this really, you get to watch the characters all like, ooh, ooh, ooh. They're just heebie-jeebie. They're just, ooh, 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 with this transcendent idea. Because they, they're suspicious. They're sure there's something wrong. There's something devious happening. But that's just a projection of fear onto everything that's around it. Yeah. Very, like, I don't know. I just, I keep hearing very humbling. This movie is just, again, very humbling. There's just such a, humbleness that like yeah exactly that exactly like what you just said like yeah I want love and like if you want love like it's just that's something about the self-honesty it's just like 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 just getting in touch that there's fear there's like something like maybe I don't want the love otherwise I would have if there's like such eagerness and then just like inviting spirit that's why so much humbleness is like spirit show me spirit reveal like you know so, yeah, it's just I feel like this movie is just a great example of that. It's just how much humbleness it is and how much, like, we do not know anything. It's just like, 
I don't know if there is like if the course says there's only love and we're sitting there trying to figure out like what is happening, what what will happen there therefore we don't know that there is only love. And so it's just a matter of like do we want to? It's just like really stay just like even just staying with that, like I don't know what love is, I don't know what spirit is, I just don't know. Just that open, like that simple openness. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we roll it? Yeah, shall we? <laughs> The dream. Yeah. Yeah. I made a breakthrough last night. I think you'll be very pleased. Okay. That's kind of symbolic too, where she has a dream of making love to him, then he turns all digital, then yeah. she wakes up really in fear, and another dream. He says, and. We made a breakthrough last night. <laughs> That's what we call true empathy. <laughs> it's not going into the darkness or trying to analyze it or figure it out, but just a joyful announcement. That's how her bad dream is met with a joyful announcement. We made a breakthrough last night. <laughs> See how different that is from human interactions. You know, as if fear wants something to relate to it or wants to be comforted by something like itself, and that's one of the most striking kind of teachings in the Course, is true empathy. Just knowing what's real and true, and staying with what's real and true, and seeing how powerful that is, it reinforces the truth that you're teaching and learning all the time, and whatever you're teaching is what you're learning, you're strengthening in your mind, so that's the point, really, of altar sessions, that was the point of expression sessions too, was to come to a sense of true empathy and see that that you're really offering a gift when you offer that. Jesus is a good example of that, but, but it just seems very strange in this world because empathy involves um, relating to the false. That's what Jesus calls false empathy, and so it's a whole new way of thinking. It's pretty much like when Nikita was talking about coming and just opening to see a whole new world, not coming to a new place or new people, but just really open to a whole new way of thinking and seeing. Yeah, exactly. Like to truly think, you know, like we're taught in the. In the Course in Miracles, like it's it's the thinking, it's a thought system, and so you have to think anew. You have to think, you have to think with God, and so every day it was just like practicing thinking in the new way, like looking at everything just in a new way, just absolutely not like 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 seeing seeing. With, with the vision, it's like, what does it even mean? Like, how, how do you live? It's like, yeah, that's why I couldn't, it's like, no wonder I couldn't, I couldn't, Jesus told me not to ask any questions, because it's like, how do you answer them? It's kind of like, it's not a place, you know, I wasn't coming into a new place. I wasn't coming to Utah. I was coming into uh, a new thought system. Like really entering a new thought system, and it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna learn this term later on in the movie, um, the term being uploaded. So, yeah, it was just like, I was coming in to be uploaded into a new thought system, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs>
Some of you saw this, the movie Brother, Son, Sister Moon. This is the story of St. Francis. When St. Francis leaves Assisi to go send Damiano, you know, and basically gives up all of his wealth and his education and his life um, to go to this, basically, church that's a ruin, um, and starts his little uh, rebuilding project, God's rebuilding project, to kind of rebuild a church, brick by brick, stone by stone, day by day. Who do you think the first people are that show up to join the Franciscans? The poor, the weak, the beggars, the sick. The ones who are like, this earth ain't it. This is a struggling, painful life. They're the ones that show up. No, the priests don't show up. The bishop doesn't show up. The wealthy don't show up because they think they've got it made. They think they've got a better life than the poor and the, the ones that outcast and so forth. It's, you know, and then as his ministry goes on, St. Francis, I mean, the one thing that he has a, 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 a real aversion to is leprosy, the lepers. But you know the ones who show up as part of his ministry right away, and Claire and all of the ones that come in, they've got a ministry to the lepers. The very thing that he can't stand, but he's so open and so open-hearted and loving, then the lepers come. So I think it's kind of fascinating. Here they are out in the middle of a desert, and going along. We made a breakthrough last night, going along with their simple, following their instruction, using the symbols that they're given, and, and here's a paraplegic <laughs> that rides out and shows up, sees the light sparking as he's working at night. Apparently he doesn't have to sleep much either, you know, because he's up welding in the middle of the night. You know, there's a lot of symbols here, but I, I get a kick. And then when the paraplegic man rolls up there, it's like, welcome. These are real simple symbols, but, you know, the more you watch these things, you start to see how, how beautiful, how simple it is. It's typically not the wealthy that are interested in spiritual awakening, because the world is a substitute for heaven, so the ego made up a world in which there seems to be some ooh-la-la, -la, and money buys that ooh-la-la, -la, and so therefore it's more, you know, more deceptive, it's a thicker fog to wake up from. And even in the story of Siddhartha, you know, he basically is a very wealthy family, and he's, he's, you know, his father has a beautiful kingdom, he wants to give him everything you know, within the, the walls of the palace and everything and this and that, and basically he has to leave the palace and go out to search for enlightenment. You have to leave behind the distractions and so on and so forth. So I think it's just, it's just beautiful in this movie how the ones that are yeah. weak, like, sick, deformed. Like, like you said, the other day in the car, he said, "Most of us, most of the ones that come here, they haven't, they haven't amounted to anything in the world." <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it's true. It's yeah. true because David was surprised to see that Lisa Cairns was uh, um, a successful writer, playwright, playwright uh, before the awakening, and David was like, "Oh wow, this is impressive because most of us haven't amounted to anything." <laughs> <laughs> we came here, and it's true, and it's like, because there's just like, this feeling, <laughs> like before it's just like, you know, kind of like, nothing worked out for me in the world, like, it just went like, I didn't do well at all, like, <laughs> like just on every level, just nothing, like, n not one thing, not one thing, and then, but then, I just really, I just take it as a compliment, and then there's always this feeling, I'm not wanted, it's like, I'm not wanted, I don't fit in. And then I've heard once, David said, the presence doesn't is not welcome in the world. It's not welcome, Christ does not, like, uh, Christ does not fit into the world. It's like, 
And so it's just like such it was just such a permission just like never like never think like that again and just like leave and be happy and it's like yeah because I it's like I don't fit in the new world. It's like I you know there's there's another home, there's another place. And so it's kinda like a compliment. It's like not wanted. It's like, oh you're not wanted by the world. That's a compliment. It's like all the ones that are gonna come from the world they're technically not wanted. But these are actually the rich ones. They're actually they they're not wanted from the world but also they don't want anything from the world either. Therefore they're rich. They're ready for the actual wealth, for the true wealth. Like I said, you know, like I thought I was going to win a lot of money before I came here, but I won like this. Mm-hmm. I won, like, I really scored, like I said. I was ready for the actual present, for the actual gift. And it was like, and I knew, I was like, because I said, I was talking on the phone with my brother at some point, and I was like, this is, and I'm like, I think this is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I was like, wait. Whatever the, I'm like, this is the only good thing that ever happened to me. There was not yeah. even a, like a comparison. So it was like this is the only valuable thing that is happening, and I was like, I'm going through on it. I'm going through with this, and I'm not backing off. Like this is it. Like I'm gonna, like I'm gonna receive it all. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, everything's backwards and upside down in this world. So that's why seems a bit tricky. Uh, You can't judge your advances from your retreats. It's all backwards and upside down, so everything that seems, that's judged as a success in this world is actually a a step away from the light. It's that flipped around. Everything that's judged as a success in this world is, is winding the mind into the darkness deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it's a lot of things that are judged as failures, which are the greatest successes. In other words, a series of, oh, I, did, I failed at this, 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 this. And it's those that seem to attain something in the world and that actually think, um, uh, think of Simon and Garfunkel's song, Slip Sliding Away. You know, the nearer your destination, the more you're slip sliding away. Because it's all backwards and upside down, so when you kind of think, wow, I've done it, I've made it, I've arrived, I've achieved something or whatever, you're slip sliding away. You're winding deeper and deeper into the darkness and the fog. Not realizing, thinking, you know, by the way the world judges it, that you're actually amounting to something. And you're, you know, as Lisa Cares might say, you're amounting to more no, no thing. You're going darker, darker into the nothingness thinking you're going greater and greater into the somethingness, but not even going in the right direction. So, it's it's interesting, um, as I get to travel around the world and go to all these countries and meet all these people and everything, and, and a lot of times I meet people that like are pretty well read in spirituality. You know, they read a lot of books about it, and they're pretty, they can quote the scriptures and all those kind of things pretty good. Um, but, what does all this accumulated learning about techniques and scriptures, you know, what does that really bring you? It's just another concept. It's another form of nothingness. And so, uh, occasionally I would meet people that, that like, had, had gone in, they were going through like 12-step programs, and they, they would meet me and they had uh, just bottomed out, you know, really hit the wall. Dark, 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 going down, down, down into addictions and seeming to go deeper and deeper into depression. And then something in their soul crying out, help! And then they find themselves at maybe a 12-step group where they're given a beautiful set of steps, you know, to turn around. And they've bottomed out and, and basically to the world, the ones that are bottoming out are the losers. These are the losers. You know, like in the kid, loser. And yet, when you bottom out, like in this devastating way, I call it, you're once removed from reality. When you're succeeding in the world, you're twice removed from reality. So I just 
love traveling around in the world and meeting the losers. Because they're closer, they're more ready to crack open. I love being in the company of losers. Uh, I can relate more deeply to losers than I can to the successful ones. Um, so you have to, the only way it comes to mind is you start to see it's backwards and upside down. You know, that's the only context that you can have. And, and really what, what comes down to is this, uh, there's a section in the back of the teacher's manual of A Course in Miracles and the question is posed to Jesus, what is the real meaning of sacrifice? And basically, it's like, and, and this is an unknown term in heaven, there is no sacrifice in heaven. But because the ego made up the word sacrifice, Jesus decides to use it like everything else. Anything the ego makes, even sacrifice can have a helpful use. So Jesus redefines sacrifice as the giving up of what you want. So basically, if you want the world, pride and, and attainment and wealth and all the things, the goodies that the world offers, you want to, the giving up of what you want, you are sacrificing God for all of that. And when you want God, you're happily going to give up everything of the world. Because the world was made as a defense against God. So you're going to sacrifice the world in favor of God, instead of sacrificing God in favor of the world. You see? He even takes the word sacrifice and he says, it just means the giving up of what you want. You have been called to the most holy function ever, you know, as the savior of the world, not in a personal way, but in your mind. You've been called to save the world, like at the, the end of um, Lucy, you know, I hear God's whisper, I am the savior. Yeah, you've been called to be the savior of the world, in your mind, in your consciousness. Would you sacrifice the call? Would you sacrifice the calling of God to wake up and know your own reality and be the savior of the world with what? Some trinkets? <laughs> oh, let's see. Savior of the world, trinkets. <laughs> savior of the world, trinkets. Hmm. Nice trinkets. Pretty, 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 pretty. Oh, wait a minute. Savior of the world, trinkets. There's your choice. There's your choice. You know, really that's the choice. That's what this comes down to. There's a section, you know, the teacher manual, and again, you know, it's got the ten characteristics of Savior, or of a teacher of God, and uh, I think it's number seven, I believe, it's generosity. And then Jesus says, uh, God's, to God's teachers, um, they do not want anything that they cannot give away. That's an interesting, they do not want anything that they cannot give away. What would they want it for? They could lose, they could only lose because of it. So anything that you want in this world that you can keep, it's like a noose around your neck. Anything that you can keep, anything that you can accumulate, anything that you can build, anything that you can hold, is your noose. And everything that you can give away <laughs> is your the gateway, your ticket to freedom. Because love can be given away. You can give it abundantly. You have a, a storehouse of love, an un, unlimited storehouse of love in your heart. You can just give, 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 and it's never running out because it's who you are. Mm -hmm. And the more you give it, the more you, wear, you are aware that you are it. That's exactly how this works. Give it away to keep it in awareness. Give, 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 give. Not get, 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 which is get to keep. Get to keep. Accumulate to keep. Possessions. That's the noose. Possessions. You know, love does not possess. It's just meant to be given away and extended. When you possess, you block yourself from the love and the light, and you put yourself into a world of darkness. And then it's just like, it seems actually 
prudent to accumulate and get and clutch and cling to. Yeah, that's the ways of the world. And if you're a good accumulator, then well, everyone has you've done very well. Yeah. And the more you accumulate, very smart. Very smart. No. Dumb. Uh. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not the direction. No, no, no. It's not the direction. So this is good. We're seeing this. So here's our transcendent one who's calmly going along, you know, and we had a breakthrough. <laughs> Very beautiful, calm. We had a breakthrough last night. Then we had a breakthrough last night. You know, it's like working round the clock, so to speak, <laughs> with breakthroughs that are helpful, that are helping, that are designed to be helpful and not to just accumulate bunch of nothingness that's good for nothing, basically, or no thing, we say. Okay, here we go. Can you prove yourself aware? That's a difficult question, Dr. Tiger. Can you prove that you are? <laughs> well, he certainly hasn't lost his sense of humor. That's a good answer. It's, people say, well, wait a minute, that's answering a question with a question, but, but why would anyone think that self-awareness could be proved in the world with the symbols of the, of the ego? You know, it's, the spirit can use the symbols to take you in the right direction, to take you toward self-awareness, but who ever said that God was reached through words? You know, what do we hear from Jesus about words? They're symbols of symbols, twice removed from reality. You know, it's not the words that are going to get you there. It's, oftentimes people read scriptures like, almost like if I keep reading the words enough, or if I do enough Hail Marys, or enough mantras, enough times, you know, it's still this belief that it's in the form, that if you repeat the form enough, you're going to reach a state of transcendence. But it's not in the form, it's not in the words, and it's not in the symbols. You know, we're talking at times about the vision of Christ, which is beyond the, the five senses. So, oftentimes they'll say, the body's eyes were made not to see, the body's ears were made not to hear. That's a good reminder about how everything's backwards and upside down, so that we don't think we're going to reach God through these eyes, or these ears, you know. We're not going to reach God through the senses. I know there's, the ego will try to come up with some interesting combinations of the senses and the spirit, as if somehow the right mix between the senses and the spirit, you know, will get you there. Maybe like Tantra or something. No, no, no. Let's get real. If, if the world was made as an attack on God, a place where God can enter not, and perception, fragmented perception, is the veil, why would you think you would reach God through the veil, using the veil? I mean, thinking that the veil has some kind of value or could be mixed, but you can't mix truth and illusion. All perception, even Forgiveness is the last illusion, but that's as high as you can go in perception, then you have to give way. That Forgiveness has to give way to go to truth. In truth there's nothing to forgive, there couldn't be anything to forgive in oneness. So you start to realize you're here to give it over, and if it's not through words, what is it through? Well, I'd say through prayer. Prayer is like the desire of your heart. You know, what's the first commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. That's a good direction, you know, through, through purification of your desire, through purification of your prayers, that's, that's going to be the gateway, but not words. You know, they used to say to me, God knows the prayer of your heart, for a word is uttered. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, you, you know, it's not in coming up with poetic, prayers, you know, thinking, oh, that was my best prayer ever. Because, okay, let's try to go beyond the words here now. <laughs> go down to the core. Yeah. 
That's a beautiful picture. Quantum processors. Quantum processors. <laughs> <laughs> this was astounding. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Through good times and bad times, that's what friends are for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. We call this doubt thoughts. <laughs> and all of us have seen that as we open our hearts up. Yeah. The doubt thoughts. It's not like they're really external. <laughs> we can't push it off and go, yeah, they're holding me back. They're supposed to love and support my spiritual journey. And they're giving me notes like this. Uh, but you know, because everything is a thought. So it's, there's a purge, there's a purification. You have to start to, you know, take them in. It's interesting though, without thoughts, is, is that fits in with what Nikita was talking about, like trust, trust and faith. It seems like that's like the theme of this movie. Because this, this will come up. And then you have to really feel that trust. You said trust would settle every problem now. But it seems like there's many turns in the journey and it seems like it's all a question of am I going to trust or not. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that simple not knowing what anything is for. And not knowing uh, the, like, your best interests. And especially when the fear comes up so strongly, it's like, just trusting, just really trusting, and uh, yeah, I don't like, I don't even know. It's just like it's beyond, just be like beyond friends. That's why I'm just, I actually, I was just like really, like looking at the, like the friends, the friends thing, and I was like, what a bitch, you know. Like this concept of a friend, it's almost like it's so subtle, but it's but there's no friends in heaven, and so, and it's just like again, just being so vigilant, like being so vigilant for, like who uh, like, who are the friend like with who are the friends it's like with the call of the heart right it's like what is the call of the heart it's just being so like always so present with the prayer of the heart it's like what do you want like what is it like look within and because otherwise it's going to be conflicting messages and it's like what is in your heart like and if it's like and from there it's like who is truly in support and usually was it like, yeah, like at some point I really had to address my brother who, um, who was, um, I mean, he's my brother and I love him. And then he was always like, he'd call me and like, da -da 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 -da. did you know that, you know, like so and so lost everything. I just, you know, I just met this woman. She used to be so successful. Then she went on some kind of religious, he calls it religious. And then she lost everything and I'm like yes that's the way it's supposed to be like you know that, that's how it is with the awakening the more you go with it you lose the interest in the world right so I would just answer and answer with like really with what was in my heart and at some point he would just still like talk and talk and I really had to at some point I was like that's it I was like that's enough I told him that is enough I do not care for these comments. I just really don't. This, these are just not in alignment in my heart. And I was like, if you, he, he every so often he'd ask me like, how how can I help you? Do you need anything? You know, like da da da. And I was like, if you really love me, like, the past. This is my like the past is my life. Like then you'll support this and these simple comments. They're not supportive. They're not in alignment. And it's as simple as that. And yes, it dropped. He was still 
you can feel he was probably doubtful, but he can feel the strength. He could just feel the strength in it, and I can feel it. And it was just like that kind of like, just again, just really deep, just being so focused on the prayer of the heart. And then in that, yeah. And just yeah, and if and if there's fear, if there's like deep fear that rises, and it's just like ah, oh, then just go to prayer right away and ask spirit to remind you who like to remind you of what is it that you want. Like if sometimes like there's just it's, it's so heavy that like there's a tendency to forget, and it's like remind me, like please remind me, and it's like and it's always. And I assure you, the, like it'll show up as a symbol. And it's like if that if the true empathy is like what you truly want, then you're gonna. This is what you're gonna receive. This is you're gonna receive only that. And it's just like a call to really be vigilant. You know, it's not about like it's not it's like forgiveness is not passive. It's not just sitting there, just like I'm forgiving, and it's just like da 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 da. But these thoughts, they're thoughts. People are thoughts, and it's just at some point, it's like, do you want this in the mind? And it's just like asking even spirit for help to address it. And sometimes it's just too much, and too sometimes their thoughts are so heavy. And then, like a, another symbol is actually given to help the address the thought, like symbol of a Holy Spirit. You know, either it's a mighty companion, and it's just really we're worthy of a clean mind like that. We're worthy of the mind that without like without doubt thoughts they do not serve and it's just that kind of, and there's no need to be hierarchy like there's no need for hierarchy it's just like I'll accept I will address everything <coughs> but my family but my kids but my mother right and uh, and it's just no it's all or nothing it's like you're worthy you're like the full mind to have a full like mind to be clean and clear and you're worthy of the whole to be in support of you to be in support of the call of your heart including your mother and your family everything so it's just that kind of yeah just invitation to not pass it by to not be passive in the wrong like passive like the ego passive you know because ego like it'll tell you you just forgiveness you you have to forgive you know forgive meanwhile it's just like like it'll tell you tolerate my blah 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 you know <laughs> so it's like that's ego's forgiveness it's like tolerate me you know don't you have to forgive me you know huh huh it's like, <laughs> no <laughs> like no mercy to illusions <laughs> you know yeah, something you, I remember, there was a movie, did anyone see the movie Grand Canyon? Yeah. 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 With uh, Kevin Klein and uh, Danny Glover, mm -hmm. Steve Martin. I remember there's a scene where the, where the, Kevin Klein's, uh, he plays Mac, but I think and his, his wife really starts to open up pretty quickly and have a lot of miracles. It's fun to see it on the big screen, she just gets more and more excited, she just starts to, her heart opens, she's having more and more and more miracles, and finally it shows the scene one morning where she just is like bubbling with joy at all the miracles that she's experiencing, and um, Kevin Klein, Mac, just starts into all this fear and doubt, and she's like, that is not an appropriate response to a miracle. <laughs> Whatever, on the big screen, I remember I was at the theater with some Horse and Miracle friends, we all were like, <laughs> That's true empathy going on here. True empathy, instead of like trying to react or respond at all, that's not an, that's not an appropriate response to a miracle. She is bubbling in the miracle, but she's also bubbling in true empathy. You know, she just and she goes right on. <laughs> she's gonna. She's got her miraculous expression, and she can't hold it back. She has to express it. This isn't like a debate, whether there's a miracle or not. The miracle is shining, it's beaming, it's extending. It's a gift. What's the word you say? Gift, gift, it's a gift, it's a gift, it's a gift. You've got to remember, the miracle's a gift. <laughs> and, and fear is not an appropriate response to the miracle. 
And that's the demonstration, you know, when you become more consistently miracle-minded, wow, what a demonstration, what a conversion, what a transformation of consciousness. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, it can be celebrated. It's not, like Jesus said, don't hide your light under a bushel. <laughs> you are the light of the world. And it's just been this old programming of, oh, I'm not sure who I am, and I'm little, and make the best of it, and you know, there's no true empathy in that way of living. That's not really living at all. That's what I liked about the Grand Canyon movie. It was really calling everyone out of the darkness and into the light. And they had all these helpful, Danny Glover, you know, was like an angel to the Kevin Klein character, and then there's all these things, and even Steve Martin, who was just making crazy violent movies, you know, he has a change of heart, you know. And maybe I'll make other movies, and she's like, really, what's happened to you, you know? It's like the miracles extend and spread, and then all the characters start, you know, just demonstrating the miracle. It's contagious, <laughs> gloriously contagious. <laughs> so I think that's what we'll start to see a bit in here. Already these, these characters are showing up just suffering and asking for help, and then they become more, they're online. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're uploaded, they're online. And then the autonomous ones, you know, uh, the ones that, you know, are still projecting fear, you know, that's, those are just the Delphos. Yeah. And they are coming up. Yeah. You can't fight them. More true empathy. Yeah, that's, not that's, that's not a human response. <laughs> We're not going to fight them. We're going to transcend them. That's, that is not human. That's great. He wants to upload me, Dave. It's consciousness. Absolutely not. We inject the infected virus into my system and then I go back and let him upload me. Okay. That's going from him to it. <laughs> it's getting more it. And you know, it was interesting when Max was just talking about the thing about you can love someone and hate what they do, you know. And she said, can you, you know, can you reconcile that? And he said, yes, I can. You know, that's, that is the whole attempt of this world, to reconcile love and hate. That's duality. That's just saying, yes, I can. They both exist. And this is just the way it is. Heaven and hell, love and hate. Yep. Can't have one without the other. <laughs> heaven and hell, heaven and hell, go together. Da, da, da. So it's this is what duality is about. So so as you go into spirituality, basically you get you have a choice between finding what what the Johnny Depp character calls singularity or union or oneness or this heaven and hell, you know, this kind of, oh, it, that's what life is, it's both. That's crazy. Remember they used to tell us things like, you gotta take the good with the bad. Reconcile yourself. You're human, you've got to take the good with the bad. It's not all good, there's bad. It's just, it's a dualistic belief system, and, and it's, the ego has made the world, with all of its cliches and phrases and everything, no one's perfect. Well, actually the one is perfect, <laughs> and the duality is the, is the illusion. But you can start to see, you can't really hold on to duality and dualism and know who you are. Because who you are is not dual. But it's just like, I'm just noticing, every time I watch it, I see something else, and he's like, 
He says, and you can, like Reckitt's office says, yeah. Oh yeah. Guns, bullet, attacks, viruses, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill the threat, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like, <laughs> the world's like, yeah, that's how it's done. Exterminate. Well, they're, they're helping people, they're healing, oh, but uh, that's not right. <laughs> that's just not right. On um, whose name do they do all these healing? You know, it's like, it's like there's disease and health. Disease and health. Disease and health. Disease and health. <laughs> you can see it's, it's just a song of you've got to take both. There's nothing more than both. Reconcile. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay, we're coming to the climax here. <laughs> You know, this reminds me of the, uh, the Course, you know, this is the belief that you can kill God. And when people read that, they go, what? That sounds so funny. Kill God. Kill God. But you see what they're, this is, the, the humans are now injecting a virus in her, hoping he will upload her, because he trusts her, and then it can wipe out this universal intelligence, you know give this universal intelligence a virus and wipe it out. Thinking that the universal intelligence is some machine, you know. But you see underneath it, there's a vicious intent, you know. Not only guns and weapons and everything, virus, using a virus, you know, to, to stop universal intelligence, to kill it. It's really, you hardly see that on the big screen where there's this intent to kill universal intelligence. Usually it's just kill the enemy. Now the enemy is universal intelligence, so just feed it a virus, you know. Oh, it trust her. Okay, let's kill it with that. It's just really this intention. When you start to realize that the belief system that made this world is the belief system that says you can kill God. It's the same belief system. So if you believe that the earth is solid and you've got your feet firmly planted on solid earth, what's underneath that belief that you've got your solid feet planted on a solid earth? The belief that you can kill God. That's what that is. That's what that is. It doesn't seem to make the connection, <laughs> yeah. But the, if you believe you're a human with feet solidly planted on the earth, then that's, underneath that is the belief you can kill God. Now this is really acting it out in an extreme way, but that's, you know, that's where this is all heading. And there, some of you, you know, it's like, is this in the Course? Is it really in the Course? Go to the workbook when you have a chance and go to the workbook lesson number 13. You know, who, Friday the 13th, go to Jesus' 13. See what Jesus has to say at 13. A meaningless world engenders fear. It's the, it's the actual title of number 13. A meaningless world engenders fear. And then he goes on and he drops his atomic bomb in 13. Read on past the first paragraph. Say, Go on down to the bottom of the page, where he puts something else in there. The title of number 13 is, A Meaningless World Engenders Fear. But if you read on, he, he says, A meaningless world engenders fear because... You believe you're in competition with God. I believe I am in competition with God. And then he says, you may find this, <laughs> you may find high resistance to this, you know, because he's beginning his cause and effect, his true cause and effect teaching, that a meaningless world engenders fear. It's not that the world's fearful, the world's neutral. Holy Spirit's neutralized the world. The world really isn't fearful, but it's fearful if you believe you're in competition with God. If you believe you can kill God, 
then that's what it is. So this is a, on the big screen, this is a big enactment of like our AI, they call it, but this, we call it like universal intelligence and they think they're going to upload a virus to wipe out. It's like this, this enemy that they don't understand and they're very frightened by. You know, you, you just attack what you don't understand and they don't understand this. And the ego doesn't understand the Holy Spirit. The ego will never understand the Holy Spirit. It, it feels that there's something above it, but it doesn't know quite what it is, because the ego cannot know the Holy Spirit, but that's what all this attacking is. Attack to protect. As soon as the FBI agent, you know, comes away from there, it's like, he's building an army out there. Well, that's the way the FBI thinks, you know. Some guys lifting some heavy weights. Ah, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and that's not good at all. Just building an army out there. Army? What makes them an army? <laughs> you know? But you see how it goes, and then the fear. Let's call Washington. That's the best Weapons thing. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, <laughs> Weapons of mass destruction. That's right. There's such a fear of looking for an external enemy. An external danger, you know, that's what this whole world is, is the belief that there is an external danger. Yeah. It's really acted out. So that's getting pretty close to a resurrection scene. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> People say, well, there's no Jesus in this movie. Well, that's... It's really close. And you can see her face start to melt too. Yeah. It's a familiar form, it's not a strange yeah. form. It's a form that she fell in love with, or or so she thought, you know, what we do. And and how to, remember the road to Emmaus? When they're walking along and they're feeling all this love with this brother that they're walking with, and then suddenly they, they see who it is that they're walking with, you know. It's again the form morphing by the Spirit, you know, to bring it through in a way that it can be accepted and received. All this fear, and her even getting injected with a virus to go and kill the universal intelligence, and now, oh, it appears. Johnny Depp comes through. <laughs> Nikita's like, yeah. So this is up to, upside down logic. It's like the more danger she's in, the better it is. <laughs> Am I the only one that's hearing this? This is this is kind of the logic. This is military intelligence. Yeah, yeah. The more danger she's in, the more chance we'll upload her and we'll save the day through destruction again. We'll destroy the enemy. You know. With, it's this belief that there's an external en enemy, like weapons of mass destruction. Remember, we have a suspicion <laughs> that there's weapons of mass destruction. I, I saw an interview not long ago, maybe a month ago, where Dick Cheney, the Vice President of the United States, was being interviewed, and, and she said, but there were no, the reporter said, there were no. He says, well, we all knew there was. <laughs> this is years afterwards. <laughs> Like, oh, we all knew there was. Mm, oh, did we all? Mm, yeah, we're all sitting there eating our toast, drinking our coffee, going, yep. Yep. Lots of weapons of mass destruction over there. Yep. Better, better bomb the hell out of them. Better get some good, powerful destruction going. So, we, it's an external enemy. It's really funny. It was a hilarious interview. Because he went right on, just the... No, you're wrong. Of course we knew. Of course we knew they were there. And now let's talk about Obama and all the terrible things he's doing. You know, he quickly you know, got to get some more anger and projection going. It's just absolutely, you know. And so this is your alternative. You either accept the call. You're being called by God to accept the atonement, accept the correction, answer the call, or this is your option. This is your. This is the other option. Not much of an option, but you can see it's just playing out. So I love this scene though. The more danger she's in, <laughs> the better. <laughs> what? <laughs> ok, 
Okay, the military is surrounded by the messengers of peace. <laughs> They're just calmly staring like, what are you doing? What is this? It's just funny, they're all kind of circling the building. They're all safe from peace up there on the top of the building where they can fire their weapons <laughs> and check out what's going, how much destruction they're registering. And then the, they're, they're surrounded, it's interesting, by the symbols. They're all looking up, hmm. Don't, yeah, that's a, that's a face there, the woman. Both of them. What is this? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Beautiful seeming ending too, because it it's what you know we we open our hearts to seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. Seems like different outcomes. A, a clean, vibrant, um, healthy Mother Earth, or kind of a bleak uh, Earth with no electronics, like a Y2K outcome. But what we're really learning from all of this is that there aren't really outcomes on earth because it's an illusion. You can't have positive illusions and negative illusions and, and it's really a, an oxymoron to heal the planet. You know, that was her dream and he gave her a glimpse into it, you know, really all the different symbols of regeneration with bodies and, and the glimpse at the end where she said, I can see everything. It's how gracious spirit is. Whatever you believe is what you perceive. But in the end it wasn't about whether he healed her body or took the, allowed the uploading of the virus or the form of things playing out however they play out. That's really the glory, is you can really let the world go. What I'm saying is you can't make the world a better place. You can let go of that dream too. Because peace of mind is what this is about. Not making a better effect. It's seeing that the world is an unreal effect from an unreal cause, the ego, and therefore you don't need a better effect. What is unreal doesn't need to be made better. And this is actually very relieving, that peace of mind is everything and the form has no meaning whatsoever. That starts off, you know, with lesson one, nothing I see means anything. I had a friend that went to the woods with me in the woods of Kentucky and she was working on the, like the first 10 lessons of A Course in Miracles and she started to skip ahead, you know, she was quite impatient with the first 10. <laughs> I said, it's got to get better than this. this is, I said, what's wrong with the, like the first one, nothing I see means anything. She said, that's insulting. <laughs> that's personally insulting. <laughs> They do, they do get better, she said, right? Like, can I look ahead and see? I said, no. You don't get any better than that. You can get the first one, you don't need the rest of the 364. Now all you've got to get is one. Because truth is simple, again, it's not a cumulative thing. She said, but don't they like build on each other? Like, it's got to get better than this. These are terrible. <laughs> terrible, I said, you know. Disgraceful. You know, but see, this is the whole thing. It's, it's going beyond the positive and the negative. Duality. It all comes back to transcending duality. You know, she's his wife, like, you tried, you tried to fight them, or we need to fight them? No, we'll transcend them. 
will transcend the opposites, will transcend the duality, will transcend the right and wrong, the good and bad, the like and dislike, will transcend this craziness that there could be two. Really, that's what this is about. But just think how relieving and relaxing that is for your mind, of not even trying to make the world a better place. Let's talk about dirt. You know, there's there's been a lot of monasteries and convents, and there was this interesting phrase, cleanliness is next to godliness. Clean, dirty. Oh my gosh, this ego is sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. It even believes that clean is better than dirty. Some of your going to stay behind and help clean the monastery. I just want you to keep that in mind. Jenny's <laughs> 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 like, David, don't go too far with this. I'm responsible for a clean monastery here and you're disempowering these people. <laughs> No, it's, when you really start to think of it, you know, it's just anything with dualistic connotations, anything at all, you can let it go, you know. So, even the great prophet Michael Jackson had it a little bit wrong. <laughs> Heal the world, make it a better place, for you and for me and the entire human race. No, Michael. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. This is about healing. Yes, it is about healing, but not heal the world. Don't try to heal the world. You can't heal what's not real. Let that be your mantra. The next time somebody says, you know, we're going to try to save the planet. You can't heal what's not real. We need a new, we, we don't have to think like that anymore. We don't have to think. It seemed pretty good for a while, right? Heal the world sounded pretty good, but then no. No. It's tricky. But you start to see, no. It's, it's, that's why the second book that I put out was Healing in Mind. Healing, change your mind about your mind. What does that even mean? How do I change my mind about my mind? Well, your mind was created by God to be changeless. So if you believe in change, then you need to change your mind about your mind. Your mind is changeless. And the ego says, no, everything changes. No. Change is an illusion. God, eternity doesn't change. What is the definition of eternity? Forever. We don't need to make a better forever. So it's, you know, these are like really deep teachings. But this, this movie really gets at a lot of that stuff, you know, it really kind of subtly flushes all that up, even at the end, you know, when he, she says, I see everything, and, and this beautiful kind of glimpse of healed waters and healed air, you know, kind of air without pollution, waters without pollution, you know, vibrancy, vitality, those are our symbols, but those have all been made up too. You know, it's just another trick. You see how deep it goes. And even regenerating the body, you know. Healing the body is another contradiction in terms. You know, you can't heal what's not real. You see how deep the mesmerism goes. The healing is associated with the body. Has the sickness associated with the body. It's not seeing that sickness is just perceiving linear time, perceiving distortions. That's what the sickness is. It's a distortion in perception. It's not in the body. That's why when people say, well, you know, if he was a saint, why did he get cancer? That sounds like a real question, but body can't get cancer. It's an image. It's a new friend. It's like saying that this uh, that this cup could get 
get cancer? What are the chances of this plastic Coca-Cola cup getting cancer, really? Zero. Zero. It, it's just an image. But what do you think the body is? It's an image. You see how the ego projects something onto the body? It says, oh no, no. Plastic cups can't get cancer. That's ridiculous. But bodies, ooh, watch out. Danger. You know. These are it's just projection of thought and as if things can be a certain way. You know, even uh, cartoons, you know, we when we when when cartoons were first drawn, you know, in comic books, you know, they seem to be these inanimate images, right? They were just on the pages. And then Walt Disney decided to flick them together in a, in a quick, rapid succession. And then what do we call that? Animation. <coughs> it's like giving motion or giving life to that which has no motion or life. See how it goes from a picture to animation. That's another trick of the ego. It's, see, the planet Earth has got a lot of animation going on. But that's a trick, too. So this is our last movie, where this is the tools we're leaving you with. <laughs> it's deep. Deep stuff. <laughs> And if you seek not to change the world, or you seek not to make the world a better place, it really frees your mind up for peace. Which is a worthy goal, as long as you believe you're not it, then it sends you in the right direction. And we try to fix, fix the world, but it just doesn't doesn't really go anywhere. And we're, we're also saying be intuitive, you know, if you, if you hear the Spirit speaking to you and say, <coughs> saying, eat healthy, it's just that you believe things about health. The Spirit has to filter through that belief system and help you, you know, in through what you believe. So, again, it's all about following the guidance, it's not about trying to ignore guidance. I had a friend one time who had, he had a succession of heart attacks, and um, after he had like, three, maybe three or four heart attacks, you know, he talked to Jesus and he said, what's going on? Why do I keep having these heart attacks? And, and um, Jesus said um, something to the effect of, well, I told you you could stop exercising and I told you you could, uh, you know, still eat these certain kinds of foods, but I didn't tell you to stop taking your blood, blood pressure medicine. <laughs> It was just, you know, again, listen, follow. If you're, if you're wound into a maze of duality and complexity, then just allow the Spirit to unwind the mind from, from that belief system. It's not telling you that there's certain things that are necessarily healthy or unhealthy or good or bad. It's thoughts. You know, Jesus does say that in his workbook. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. So that sends you in the right direction to forgive and release attack thoughts. But it's not about trying to say that these things are more healthy than those things and so on and so forth. And you know, in the end you can see, you just have to be very trusting and intuitive with your, with your guidance. That's always the key, I will, step, I will step back and let him lead the way, is a workbook lesson. That's 
opening and yielding to that beautiful guidance within you that will set you free. And it's highly individualized, so you don't need to go around telling people what's healthy and what's not healthy. <laughs> Follow your intuitive spirit is, is the pathway, not trying to determine, you know, if you do these things it'll kill you, if you do those things it'll kill you, you know, it's, the world doesn't understand what killing is, it's, it's the ego in the mind. It's just a murderous <coughs> thought that has to be forgiven, <laughs> not a bunch of things in the world, in the end. You pluck the offense out of your mind, you see the impossibility of separation and then that's what the healing is. The whole process of exercise is just convincing your mind and then when your mind believes it, it gets reflected back with your body to mm -hmm. put this ruin, no change. There ought, it seems like there would be a way to skip the whole exercise, but then why would you want to, right? Yeah, it's like you, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know. It's all belief. You diet, you'll get thin. You exercise, you'll get muscular. You know, it's all false associations, but it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's what makes it so convincing. You know, the placebo thing, mm -hmm. if you, people believe it, believe it will help them. It does. it does. It's because the mind is that powerful. That's what the placebo is about. So, you know, it's not trying to downplay the power of the mind in any way, but it's, it, the more you go inward, the more you see, wow, I really need to look at belief. I need to take a, an honest look at that belief. And that's, that's what the Course in Miracles helps you do. It, it just literally takes you by the hand and says, Come on, we're taking a journey inside your mind. I have the light, Jesus says. I have the lamp. It's going to be well lit. We're going to light up all the dark crevices. And you'll be free. So, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And it's a shift in purpose. I mean, I remember in the parable of David, you know, I was like, oh, I played all these sports and golf and tennis, basketball, and went to the gym to lift weights, be on the exercise bikes, treadmills, cardiovascular fitness, going shopping, reading ingredients as I'm going down the aisles, looking, you know, it's low in polys saturated fats and da, 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 yeah. yeah, you know, you go through it, you believe it, and you perceive it, and you actually, receive you receive it, <laughs> but you believe you, you receive, you know, it's, it's really that way. And so, then, when I started getting into the course, it was like, oh, this is a course in mind training. Looking at my thoughts, paying attention to my emotions, Uncovering beliefs. Oh, and it's a systematic course too, that's good. I like that, it's not like a little hit or miss thing. So it was just, it's just one among many pathways to God that work. And, you know, you just keep applying and applying and applying. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts, I like that one. Okay, well I'm gonna really practice forgiveness then, if I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. My vulnerability, you know, is is going to come from real thoughts, and my vulnerability is going to come from attack thoughts, so I would like to release these attack thoughts. And yes, of course you do. So it works. And you just trust. You know, that's the, I tell that parable of when I came up to the monster. I hadn't been here for a while and I came here and <laughs> she was standing in the pond. I said, what are you doing? She said, they told me to clean the rocks. And she just, we just had, we met, I looked at her eyes and okay. This girl's got faith. <laughs> really? You can trust or you can ask why, but, and I'm not talking about crazy wisdom, just blindly doing anything, but, but she had a feeling 
Like, oh, I'm here for a reason. And there's something that I'm supposed to experience. And, I'm, and I don't know the way. Like, I don't know the way, but Spirit knows how. But the desire for the experience was so deep. It's like, that is just like such deep readiness and I don't know the way. And I remember, yeah, and it, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, yes, 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 yes. Just simple trust that everything, somehow, spirit is working in the mysterious way to bring, to bring me, like, bring me up to the experience, however you want to call it, just like for it, to open the mind up so that it can be received. And it's like, and that's, and that's like, the only, like, like I said, it's just like, entering into this new way of thinking and so the world from there on everything that's used it's like it's only for the experience there's no other purpose it's like it's like from there it's like from there on and it was never about like completing something or doing something it was only just like the means to heaven really the means to like which is heaven is a state of mind so it's all the means to heaven and it's all very dear from therefore it's it's valuable that's the only value there's no like there's no other value in anything so it's just like as long as it serves and then i don't have to decide has it served has it not like what how long it's like it's all given it's all very clear and it's like it's all under spirit's control it's like I don't have to worry about it. It's like I don't have to sit there, come on, come up like with the means. It's like what's most helpful. I don't have to do any of this. It's just like simply being so open and so grateful that it's like spirit knows the way and trusting and having faith and yeah, and then just like. And then it's fun, <laughs> and from there on, it's just fun. Kind of like it's fun because kind of like nothing makes sense, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> like it's some, but you can nothing makes sense, but the feeling of joy is there, and it's that present, and that's all that matters. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, this is good. This is spirit given. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you let go of thinking things matter. Uh, it was fun when I learned that you still have clothes from when you were like 13 or somewhere, 15, you know, you know, or a jacket that you had for years and years and years and years and years. It's just like, you know, there's no question. It serves. Just keep using what serves. You don't need new versions of what serves. Yeah. Just yeah. use what serves. The simplicity of that. Or people say, what What does she eat, you know, and everything. And <laughs> not much, but occasionally some Cheetos. <laughs> it's Cheetos. People are like, what? Those orange? <laughs> you know. Is it, does she have a balanced diet? Does she eat greens and fruits and grains and everything? Well, Cheetos and Coke. Mm -hmm. You say Coke, you can get rust off of nails with Coke. But, so you see, it's not what you put in your mouth. Somebody said this something about this 2,000 years ago. There's a guy with long hair. It's not what you put in your mouth that defiles. So it proceeds forth from the heart. It's, the defilement, you've got to go deeper to look for the defilement. Don't look to try to find it in what you put or don't put in your mouth, you know. It, it goes deeper than that. Wearing the same jacket for years and years and years. And I think this guy 2,000 years ago said something about, take no thought for what you shall wear or eat. Hmm. Maybe he wasn't joking. Maybe he actually meant, take no thought for what you should wear. Maybe it wasn't some kind of mysterious, cryptic message. 
you get back to heaven, you say, oh, I wanted to ask you about some of the things you said. Well, what I said was, what I meant was, yes, take no thought for what you swear. But the ego has this thing called a palate. You know, it wants to be satisfied. But the prophet Mick Jagger told us, I can't get no satisfaction. He was, he was coming at us from everywhere. Beatles, Mick Jagger, it's coming through our awareness, you know. And we're not meant to try to get satisfied in the world. I mean, what happens when you satisfy the senses? You want more. And if you're willing to play the game, it will be coming around again. Yeah, that's what time is. It's a game, yes. It just comes around and around and around and it just keeps perpetuating. But what if this whole thing is is not real? Then, ah, that's good. It's a good insight. <coughs> Safe to say, Jesus drank sour goat milk, huh? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we know the apostles were concerned that he would him going teaching for so many hours without putting much in in the body, and he would talk. I have manna from heaven. What's he talking about? He's not, he's not human. Huh? Apparently he drank vinegar and he thought it was water and he was grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that. Well, they put they Someone put the vinegar on his lips. Yeah. But yeah, when when you're transcendent of time and space and suffering and taste, then yeah, vinegar on the lips is not good or bad. Neutral. <laughs> and this is very practical. That's why we just really emphasize guidance. Really tune into your guidance. It's so practical. So very, very practical. You can trust that you can become intuitive. Okay. Well, that was a great that was a great finale. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.